What's going on YouTube? It's Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We're back with another video and this time we had a question come up in one of the Facebook groups this week and it was how do you run your vending business while working a full-time job? And I thought that'd be a great thing to focus on for this video because it's one thing that I do and I'm sure a lot of you out there do as well. So let's talk about that for a minute. So here I am, we're at our break and alignment shop and I don't know if you can tell in this video, but I'm kind of in a hurry. And, and the reason why is because I am on my lunch break from my regular job. Now, with this whole pandemic thing that's happening or, you know, that's happened, um, I, I'm lucky I do get to work from home currently. So I'm able to run to locations on my lunch break and I'm able to stock up everything and not have it sit in my car all day. So that can be a challenge as well. So with this location, we have a soda machine and we have the snack machine next to it. And we're going to start with the soda machine. Now, we, we were here, you know, probably what, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And the downfall with this location right now, which I'm not sure if you noticed was I was walking in, they make the customers wait in the parking lot in their vehicles, or they do have some chairs set up in the parking lot. So, you know, that, that couch that I always have to move out of my way at this location is it's kind of moved out now, and they've got stuff stored on it. Um, so my machines aren't getting the traffic that they normally would because they're not letting customers in the waiting area. So you can see that I didn't have to stock up as much. Now, you know, the, the root beer is down a little bit because the owner buys a lot of root beer. The Coke has some, some sales as well because uh, one another one of the employees buys a lot of the Cokes. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the collection. Um, yeah, we'll get the coins pulled first. And actually, it was quite a handful. Actually, now that one's not quite a handful. I think it's the other machine. But, you know, there was a few coins in there. But actually, I was quite surprised with how many bills were in the bill acceptors. Check this out. There we go. That's actually a fat stack for, uh, for what, a week and a half, two weeks with no customers in the waiting area. I thought that was pretty good. You know, it's getting hot here in South Carolina. So that means our drink sales are definitely going to increase. So I was really happy to see, to see exactly you know, how much money we pulled out of that machine. So let's get that one locked up and then we'll move on to the snack machine. And the snack machine didn't do as well. Uh, but that's another thing you want to think about. If you are working a full-time job and you're visiting your locations on your lunch break and you're in a warmer climate, especially in the summer months, you know, how do you deal with chocolate and different things melting um, if you're storing them in your car. I know what I was doing for a while when I was reporting to the office, I was actually bringing a cooler with ice packs for my chocolates and different things like that. And I wasn't leaving in them in my car. I was actually bringing them and putting them on, you know, bringing them to my desk in my office as well. So, you know, people were probably looking at me like, why is that guy got so much candy, right? Um, but most of my coworkers knew that I also run a vending business. So it's definitely common for me to have large amounts of snacks or candy and uh, I was actually surprised none of them actually ever tried to ask me for you know candy or a snack or to, even even to buy anything um, so I guess that's a good sign they know that it's for my machines so here we go we're stocking up all the different things that are missing from this machine and I think this is going to be a lot of employee driven sales at this location for this round um, notice too those special K breakfast bars uh, I think they're like a, like a, they're not really neutral green, but they're like a pastry crisp. Uh, they're really light and fluffy, and they're really cheap um, in order to buy per unit. So I definitely am trying more, more, out more breakfasty stuff in some of my locations, and they obviously are doing pretty well in this location. So we're going to keep going with that here. I'm definitely doing better than the Lance Crackers were here. So that's definitely a good sign. I think we also, they're doing better than the Rice Krispie Treats were. All right. Let's go ahead and get that drawer in. Let's go to the next drawer. I know we got to put more Nestle Crunch, and I think we end up using the rest of the Nestle Crunch we have in stock, and we don't get to stock the full machine up. So you know what that means, guys. Trip to Sam's Club in our near future. There we go. Yeah, we got that robot halfway full. And then there's the pesky drawer that never likes to close. i got to give it a little forcing there. There we go. Only took three tries that time. All right, now I'm going to check the rest of the levels, and then it's time to do the collection, because I don't think we have to do too much stocking. Because, again... The customers are waiting in the parking lot and in their cars. <laughs> so that's definitely going to hurt sales. But it's better than nothing, guys. We'll take it. All right, so this is a quick lunch break trip. You know, we spent maybe five, seven minutes or so in, in this one here. We'll go ahead and pull the coins. That one's a little bit better handful there. And then we'll pull the dollar bills out of the dollar bill acceptor as well. Um, and then we're going to move on to our next location. And, you know, what I try to do being the fact that I work a regular full-time job is I try to, really, I try to make my collections and my inventory, my, my service 
route, whatever you want to call it. I try to make it on the evenings and weekends, um, but there's just some locations like this break and lineman shop that their their operating hours are currently the same as my business hours. So in order for me to service them, I got to go on my lunch break. <laughs> there's another thing, guys. That um, suggestion list was there for months, and we did not get one suggestion there on that list. So we're going to chalk that one up as a fail. We're going to remove it. I'm tired of looking at it, guys. Rip it off that machine. There we go. Now we got everything packed up. We got our work area cleaned up. It's time to move on to the next location. Let's go. Let's move on. All right, guys. Here we are back at the laundromat location. Now this is a two-week collection, and I did stop and check on this machine once in between just to make sure there were no coin jams because you know we've been having issues with that coin mech. Um, so here we go. Let's open up the machine. Let's see how it did. So, not too bad. Our levels are a little low on the Pepsi, but the Coke and the Mountain Dew are about halfway down. I think we had, I think we had everything filled all the way up. So, I'm going to do just a quick inventory. So, while I'm doing that, guys, it's time where I call out for the comments. I need you to comment down below and tell me how your vending business is doing. You know, now that, at least here in the States, the, the weather is starting to warm up. So, are you seeing an increase in your drink sales? I know I certainly am. Um, and I'm seeing a decrease in my snack sales, at least in some locations, like the previous location. Um, and it could be the fact that, you know, obviously customers are not allowed in the waiting room or that they're having them wait in the car. I'm sure if a customer said, hey, I know you got a snack machine in there and I want to come in and buy a Nestle Crunch, I'm guessing they would probably let them. But um, yeah, anyway. Are your sales up? Are your sales down? Are you seeing an increase in the drinks due to, due to the warmer weather? Tell me about your vending business and what's going on. All right, guys. So just finishing up the inventory, I'm doing a quick count of every can in the machine so that way we can start stocking up and I can track everything. Here we go, getting that Mountain Dew counted up. All right, now's the, the part where you get to watch me stock up all the sodas and see what little tricks I've got on my sleeve today. All right, what are we going to start with? I've got a car full of sodas. We're going to start with the Coca-Cola. And it looks like we can fit definitely one 12 back in there, maybe two. But if we can't fit two, you know what we'll do, guys. All right, let's start with the first 12 pack. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those up as much as I can. And then we'll move on to the next soda. But before we do, I think I can, I can just barely fit two in there. I think I can fit 23 cans, if I if I recall correctly, 23 cans. So while while we're back to this, how do you run your vending business while you work a full-time job? So this particular video was shot on a Saturday morning. So I, here I am at this location on a Saturday morning. You know, I work a Monday through Friday job, so I focus on the evenings and weekends to service my location. So this is a Saturday morning um, job or a Saturday morning service, and we're gonna go ahead and get that other 12 pack of Coca-Cola in there. And one thing that's kind of cool about doing your service on the weekends, especially on uh, the locations that support that or that are open, is if you go early enough in the morning, usually the customer traffic is not too bad because I don't know about you guys, but there is one thing that kind of irks me when it comes to running a vending business, and that's um, having everybody watch you as you're handling money or <laughs> stocking up the machine or, you know, they're curious about, you know, what, What's, what's the inside of a soda machine look like? Um, or, you know, they'll start coming up and asking you questions. You know, when I'm when I'm doing my, my vending stuff or when I'm recording these videos, I just want to get in. I just want to do my work and I just want to get out. Um, you know, if you, have, if you have a problem, absolutely, I'll take care of that or something like along those lines. But, you know, I just want to get my work done, guys. <laughs> I'm sure you do too. But that's how it goes in this role, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and get the grape soda stocked up. And grape soda, for some for some reason, it, it, it's just taken off at this location. Uh, for the longest time, I had orange soda in there only. I had a Diet Pepsi in there. The Diet Pepsi wasn't doing so good. And because orange was doing so good, I thought, you know what, I'll try the grape Fanta as well. Since I put the grape Fanta in, the orange sales have slowed down and the grape has gone way up. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I think I said it in my last video, you can't buy the Fantas at Sam's Club. So I really have to chase sales when it comes to the Grape Fanta. Luckily, this is the only location that I do Grape Fanta at, but you know, I try to keep at least two 12-packs of Grape Fanta on my inventory rack at home at any given time. Um, this week, I did some shopping, and uh, they had plenty of orange, but no grapes, so I've only got one 12-pack right now, which you'll probably see the next time we visit this location. Hopefully, I can find another one. 
that's on sale, of course, uh, before then. But here's another pro tip, guys. Don't forget to check out the Flip app. It's spelled F-L-I-P-P. And what it does is it is like, um, I guess it does like ad scans, or I guess the, it downloads all of the grocery store ads, or really whatever store you select as your favorites. Um, and it shows you your previous week and your current week, or like your current week and the following week. That way you can kind of follow the sales and you can compare what's going to be on sale where, and you can kind of plan your route uh, for shopping as well when it comes to soda sales. You know, at least that's what works for me because I'm still a small vending company. Um, larger vending companies that have, you know, massive accounts probably wouldn't be very sufficient for you. Um, but um, yeah, definitely make, make sure you check out the Flip app. It has really helped me determine what stores I need to go to and when. And you know, the new ads start on Wednesdays, usually for me anyway. So like Tuesday nights, uh, I always have to make a decision like, am I going to go shopping Tuesday night and get the end of this week's ad? Or am I going to wait until Wednesday morning because there's going to be better deals Wednesday morning? So I usually have to make that decision. And, and you know, some weeks there's, there's great sales and then the following weeks there'll be terrible sales. So like, for example, you know, last week we had some great sales for Memorial Day. Um, but now the following week, there are like no good deals when it comes to sales. So make sure you're buying when the sales are hot, guys. And don't be afraid to overbuy, especially if you know how, how your machines function and depending on the time of year, of course. So, you know, as we know, it's getting warmer and our drink sales are up. So I am overbuying right now. And it's kind of funny because I feel like I'm constantly buying 12 packs of soda. But, you know, it, it's worth it, guys. I mean, we... You know, the, the profit margins are great for a vending company. So make sure you're following the Flip app and following those sales because it will definitely help you, especially things you can't get in bulk like Fanta drinks and other things like that. But anyway, guys, we got the machine all stocked up. We've got, uh, let's see, we got two 12 packs of Coke. We've got two 12 packs of Pepsi. We've got one 12 pack of grape and it looks like we're gonna fit one more 12 pack of Mountain Dew in there to make a total of two there. And that's gonna be 84 cans of soda, guys. So with being knowing that we were able to sell at least 84 cans of soda, uh, we should know that our money should be at least $84, right? At least that's how it should be because we do $1 per can in this machine. So while, once we get that stocked up, we're gonna go ahead and check the cash boxes. And we can't fit that last one in there, so let's go ahead and slide that over on the Diet Mountain Dew column, because that's our holdover column, guys. We don't do very good sales with Diet Mountain Dew, but there are some people that specifically request it. Uh, it's, it's actually like uh, there's a, a cotton candy business, as funny as that sounds, on the other side of the laundromat. And they come over and they requested that Diet Mountain Dew be in there because they want to make... Um, they want to buy that every now and then. It's not enough to really support it, but, you know, I like to keep everyone happy. All right, so guys, look at that coin waterfall there. It will fill the, point, the bag up with coins. It did pretty well. Um, you'll see exactly about how many quarters were in that pole between this location and the break and alignment shop. Let's do the cash box. There we go, guys. That's a nice stack, too. We're having a good day. Two locations, and we've got two pretty good poles, guys. All right, so now that we got that all taken care of, we'll go ahead and throw the money in the car, and then we'll lock this machine up, and then we have a surprise visitor. <laughs> so kind of a funny story with this one, guys. So let's go ahead and throw, toss the money back there. I'm going to lock the machine up, and look, there's the laundromat maintenance guy. So he is coming to tell us that there's a problem with the coin shoot, and he wants to point it out to us. And I basically had to tell him, yeah, I know there was a coin jam. I already fixed it. You're clear. He's testing everything. He's, he said he put some WD-40 in there for me. And I was kind of telling him, you know, anytime there's a problem, you know, you can always give us a call. And he's like, well, I don't have your phone number. So as I'm talking to him, I'm like, hey, um, smart guy, look at, look at the machine. Our phone number's right there. <laughs> so he's like, oh, all right. Well, then from now on, if I, if I have a problem, I'll give you a call. So we, uh, we kind of set a couple pleasantries, and that was well on our way. And then I have a quick social distancing fail. There we go. Social distancing fail. Sorry about that, guys. Don't worry, I used hand sanitizer afterwards. All right, so let's count up the money, guys. So we've got $50 in quarters in rolls, and then we're going to let the, the cash machine count the cash. We got $82 in cash plus $50 in coins. That's $132 total for two locations on a quick visit and quick service, guys. Here we go, 132 bucks.
So guys, thanks so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. We really appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification so you're always notified when our new videos go live. Give us a thumbs up and share our videos. Comment down below and thanks so much guys. This is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.